Well, folks, the mask has finally slipped right off our grossly incompetent leaders' faces and landed in the gutter to be urinated upon by an owled tramp. I'm sure it pained them to concede this, but it was actually on Sky News. ...view into how Public Health England calculates the daily death figures from coronavirus. Let's get more uh, from Sky's Rob Powell, who is in Downing Street uh, this morning. Uh, what's this all about, uh, Rob? So this is about how Public Health England calculates um, who has died from coronavirus and who gets added, whose deaths get added on to that tally that we've grown used to seeing um, day by day that currently stands at around 45,000. Um, now, the issue is, is that the way it's being counted at the moment means that if you are diagnosed, you test positive for coronavirus, even if you go into hospital, but then you recover and you come out, and then two months later, say, or a period of time later, you then die of something completely unrelated to coronavirus, your death will still be added to that coronavirus um, death tally. So the example that was given to me by a government source was basically if you had tested positive in February for coronavirus, uh, you'd recovered, you'd been fine for the last few months, but then you'd been hit by a lorry or hit by a bus yesterday and died, your death would still be added on to that coronavirus tally. <laughs> How good's that? How good is that? This is what we've been joking about for months. Those of us that were sceptical way back in, what, February, March, when I was talking about this. I never in my wildest dreams it'd be as daft as that, but it fucking is. So if you get COVID-19 you get COVID in February, you feel a bit rough for a week, and then you get over it, and then... <laughs> July the 20th, you're, uh, you're, you're minding your own business, watching Netflix, and then a mad rapey axe man kicks your door down, donkeys one into you, and then caves your head in with a fire axe. <laughs> you died of COVID-19, ladies and gents, you poor bastard. Damn those Chinese and their virulent virus of death. What, what about the rapey axe men? Uh, you could have walked that off. You could have walked the axe through the fucking head off. It's, it's not the end of the world. Oh yeah, and uh, and don't call it the uh, don't call it the Chinese virus. Remember, it's the Trump virus. You know, the, <laughs> the guy who doesn't have anything to do with it and was fourteen thousand miles away <laughs> when uh, when the virus was cultivated in either a lab or a wet market in Wuhan. No, it's it's the Trump virus, and it kills murder. The Trump virus kills all the murder victims. That's the crack. Even though clearly. Uh, even though you may have had it, clearly your death is nothing to do with coronavirus at all. So essentially what this means is that that tally that we've been used to getting from the government every day when they are updating us on death figures um, is likely to be out, is likely to be... Likely to be out? No, the tally that the government has been releasing is less accurate than a Chinese Rolex. We're talking about Chinese viruses. Let's talk about the Chinese Rolex. If you buy one from a market for 11 quid. It's not going to be accurate. <laughs> it wasn't made by a, a Swiss craftsman who was an apprentice for 11 years. It's made by a nine-year-old orphan handcuffed to a workbench <laughs> with shoddily made tools. It's not likely to be out, Sky News. It is 100% 100% definitely guaranteed to be out. Too high, which means that that 45,000 figure that we are currently um, looking at in terms of deaths from coronavirus um, is likely to be wrong. Now, this doesn't affect when you're looking at excess deaths, a different way of... 45,000 paltry deaths, um, likely to be wrong. And what was I saying in March? According to some statistics, they reckon up to 100,000 people would have died from other medical illnesses that weren't getting taken care of because we locked everything and all of the fucking pensioners were terrified to go to the hospital because they thought they were going to die of COVID-19. Just think about it. I mean, you, seriously, you, you don't even need to look at the statistics I've got. You can just think of the, again, use the common sense test. If it passes the common sense test, probably an accurate presentation of events. Did the COVID-19 reaction and the worldwide lockdown, did that cause people not to go to hospital for 
preventative care and diagnosis. 100% yes. Guaranteed 100% yes. There was people who had, oh, I feel a bit dicky today. There's something the matter. Should I go to the hospital? No, fuck that. In March. Yeah. No screenings, no diagnoses, nothing. If they then had a stroke or a heart attack or a diabetic attack or anything, anything that they would have been way more likely to seek medical attention for any niggling issues they were concerned about and went on to die as a result of it. They were killed by the response to this virus. So it's highly likely, and I'm sure we'll get to the, the bottom of all this eventually. It might take a year or two, but we'll get there eventually. It's highly likely that the response killed more people than the virus itself. Here's a good piece from I found in the Japan Times. Just, just one piece, just with some straws in the wind. Uh, it says, The debate over the stringency of and exit from the lockdown measures is usually framed of a choice between public health outcomes and the economy. As I've said, locking everything down causes death. It said, It's possible in the fullness of time, economies might rebound, but the cascade of lockdowns across the world will be shown to have killed more people than it saved, and also more people than died of COVID-19 itself. It says, firstly, lockdowns could have a profound and pervasive impact on mental health and lead to more suicides. US experts are warning of a historic wave of mental health problems caused by daily doses of death, isolation and fear. Dr. Mike DePosblanc, head of trauma at John Muir Medical Center in Walnut Creek, California said, we've seen a year's worth of suicide attempts in the last four weeks. A year's worth. In the UK, the Royal Kit College of Psychiatrists said there was a six-fold increase in suicide attempts by the elderly and also a surge in 18 to 25 year old men badly affected by first-time mental health issues. Australian experts said it lockdown-induced 50% jump in suicides could kill 10 times as many people as the virus. Elective surgeries and routine screenings have been suspended, right? It's a big one I've talked about. How many of the nearly 2 million new cancers each year and also heart, kidney, liver and pulmonary illnesses will also go undetected? Fucking lords. Said people at risk from these illnesses total 70 to 80 million and a mere 1% excess fatality in this group caused by shortages in personnel, supply and equipment could mean another 750,000 Americans will die from a policy that was meant to shield the health system but instead partially crippled it. In the UK, over 2 million planned, in the UK, over 2 million planned and elective operations have been cancelled. An internal memo circulated for cabinet discussion estimated up to 150,000 could suffer non-COVID-19 premature death as a result of the lockdown, including almost 18,000 cancer patients. Carol Sikora, a consultant on oncologist with the National Health Service, estimates up to 50,000 more UK deaths from cancer if the lockdown lasts six months owing to the lockdown-induced pause in health screenings. Similar stories are coming out in Germany. Point fucking made. I don't think I need to go on, do I? Counting deaths, and this doesn't affect the data that we get from the ONS. There's a couple of different sources of data for coronavirus deaths. The ONS figures are likely to still um, be um, accurate, but in terms of the actual count that Public Health England and the government rely on, well, that uh, now looks to be um, inflated. So this urgent review has been ordered by the health secretary to basically try and sort out this issue and to try and establish actually by how much they have... I fucking love it. Here's a text version from the Washington Examiner. Health department says England counting anyone who died after testing positive for coronavirus as related death. Two days ago, July 18th. This comes after the British government ordered a review of how daily coronavirus death figures in England are tallied after some claimed the figures were inflated. Although it may seem straightforward, there is no WHO agreed method of counting deaths from COVID-19, said Dr Susan Hopkins, England's Public Health Incident Director. In England, we count all of those who have died who had a positive test at any point to ensure our data is as complete as possible. So, <laughs> who the fuck thought that was sensible? Why, why is the private sector so much more competent at dealing with things than anything related to the government? In my last job, we had a weekly meeting with all the heads of department. This is for an aerospace company. And every week, we all got around the table and we talked for an hour. And I was the management rep for quality control. And I was constantly not arguing, sometimes quite robustly, but sometimes just telling them. If, if a head of a department, like engineering, say was like, oh yeah, we're, um, 
we're just going to skip filling in the uh, the QA documents because uh, we've done this like six times and there was never any issues. So we can just skip that, can't we? And I'd be like, no, you can't. Because if the FAA turn up and we don't have said documents, I will be forced to fucking rape you with a broom shank or something along those lines. You have to be quite stern doing that type of job. I can't believe that these twats don't have a weekly meeting and they didn't all get around the table and at some point, nobody in that entire room went, whoa, whoa, hang on a sec. In England, we count all those that have died have ever had a positive COVID test. Uh, so if a nurse got it in February and then she dies of cardiac arrest or a stroke in July, yeah, you think we should still be putting her on the list? And nobody from Dr. Susan Hopkins down went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sensible, that. We don't want our data to not be complete. Yeah? The data's got to be complete. Well, it's not complete if it's fucking worthless. You're just putting in ridiculous shit like that. That is as daft as saying, right, we want to work out how many people uh, died of cancer last year. Well, um... You know, there might have been a few people who got run over by a tractor, but they had cancer. Oh, put them down. What if it was one of them ones like testicular cancer where they get over it? Nah, fuck it, put them down. We need the data to be complete. My uncle got savaged by 12 Rottweilers. Yeah, add him to the list. Fuck it, we want the data to be complete. Whoa, what, what are they talking about? And again, why do people like Dr. Susan Hopkins never get held accountable? Why, when it's the government, do we just... Go, ah, well we'll, well, we'll put that one down to experience. Like, the people who run all of our most important health-based companies and industries and m the directors of our big public health boards are just fucking incompetent to the point of it being hilarious to me. Like, seriously, I know nothing about the healthcare industry, but if I was sitting in on a meeting and I heard Susan utter that sentence, I'd have just said... Are you, uh, are you pulling my pisser? Like, is the whole point of this... Are you lads all winding me up? Like, you, you're all gonna just, like, come out with shit like that? And then when I didn't say anything, get to the end of the meeting and go, Whee! We had you there, you silly bastard. There she is on Twitter. It may seem straightforward, but there is no agreed method. So we count everyone who's died who's ever had a po positive test at any point to ensure our data is as complete as possible. Well, it's not complete if you're making shite up, is it, Susan? Now is the right time to review how deaths are calculated and no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> there we go. Quality. I love it. I fucking love it. Yeah, look, my friend Sarah sent me that one. That video. He said, I told you, if you get it by a double-decker bus but you had a fucking runny nose, they might you down as a COVID victim. And she's a nurse, so she's already had it. She had it in February or March. It was bad for about a week. She said it wasn't even that bad. She said, if I get it by a bus tomorrow, I'm a COVID death. I said, yeah, it's dangerous. It fucking makes buses attracted to you. Yeah, <laughs> if, it, if it let off pheromones that, that are uh, particularly attractive to bus drivers, um, COVID-19 would be as dangerous as they say. If it made them inexplicably, like, they, they smelt you and they go, shit, and then it's like a tractor beam and they just put the foot down and drive towards you as fast as they possibly can. Then I would think I'd agree with the quarantine and the lockdown, but it doesn't, so I don't. On some days, England has seen more than 100 daily virus-related deaths as opposed to none in other parts of the UK. <laughs> uh, a patient who was tested positive but successfully treated and discharged will still be counted the cause of COVID death even if they had a heart attack or were run over by a bus three months later. They said, this statistical flaw has occurred. How? How? How didn't you fucking find it in the first week you started counting them this way? Does nobody, do they not have meetings in Public Health England? I want to know how they run their fucking day-to-day -day affairs. Are we still are we still doing black bile and yellow bile and <laughs> treating people with leeches? <laughs> Fuck me. More than 45,000 people have been recorded as dying from it and around 90% occurred within 28 days. Yes, but what comorbidities did they have? As I've talked about, Alzheimer's, heart problems, respiratory illnesses, cancer. How many had one of those four issues? that also died within 28 days of a test. How many? Because seriously, I would I think that this figure's probably about twice as high as it should be. If you take out all the people that had one of those major comorbidities that I'm sick of going on about, 
tell me that number. I want to know how many people died who didn't have cancer, morbidly obese, asthmatic, heart defects or heart problems, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, any of the big ones. I want to know how many people have died that didn't have any of them. And we'd even got to admit, there's going to be ones who died who just had undiagnosed issues, right? There's got to be some. Some guy who had like a heart defect or a, a, a respiratory defect that, 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 that was unknown to them. Fucking unbelievable. After experiencing a peak in mid-March, they fell in the UK to fewer than a thousand per day in July. <laughs> well, it's a lot fewer than that, isn't it? And don't forget, Fauci himself told Americans not to wear masks at the beginning of the pandemic. So we're fucked, aren't we? We don't know what is going on, like I said yesterday. We, the, the, the jury's still out, the science is still up in the air, and everyone is panicking because they're a bunch of wet blankets with the intestinal fortitude of a fucking dormouse. It, it, it's a it's a bite and I'm still pissed off because my gym was massively social distanced there was 10 feet between every machine and they make you wear a mask and they make you wear your gloves and they've still closed them all again after I used it for about two weeks unbelievable I mean think of it another way right either they work or they don't but pick one I was whinging at the LA Times today because they were like oh yeah with indoor options reduced why don't we go outside? I'm like, listen, the gym's good for your mental health. It's good for your physical health. It's good for your health in general. And they socially distance them well. Now, the imbeciles running Los Angeles, I guess California as a whole, have locked them all again. Like Garcetti and his minions need to give their fucking heads a shake. This retard heard the exercise outside. Like, I haven't already thought of that. Like, I don't go running fucking nearly every day now because I'm sick of being fucking stuck in. If the masks work, we can keep the gyms open, can't we? They make me wear one, therefore open it. If they, if they work, make us wear them and open everything. If they don't work, don't make us wear them and don't open everything. But the fucking idea that you should just do both, <laughs> they work, so you have to wear them, but uh, let's just close everything anyway. What's the point? Fucking pick one. Pick one. I'm sick of this nonsense. Safe to say all of these figures are inflated. And the other thing to think of is, people die being alive is dangerous. People die every single day. I checked the figures on the Home Office website, and we lose about 12,000 people a week. Anyway, like, it's between 10 and 12 typically in an average week. Being alive is dangerous. People die a lot. <laughs> so, 45,000, and we know for a fact they've definitely been inflated. How dangerous is it? Is it any worse than the normal flu? And the naked political attitudes towards it piss me off as well. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in this day and age, aren't you? Because everyone's just playing a political game. Like when Labour posted this, do you remember this one? Boris Johnson and the Tories have completely mismanaged COVID. Highest death rate in Europe. They have blood on their hands. Look at the pictures. <laughs> like they're all fucking evil zombies. Like what are they going to come out with now? They're going to say, oh yeah, um, turns out we've doubled the deaths so we're not the highest death rate in Europe anymore or therefore um, well Boris is a liar and he lied about the numbers even though again I keep making this point the Prime Minister or the President isn't in charge of every aspect of the entire country like he's micromanaging public health England if it turns out to be the case that public health England have fucking inflated the figures by 25% they're not going to go oh okay so we're actually doing quite well and we haven't got the highest death rate in Europe They'll just change the argument. They'll just be like, oh, well, uh, he's incompetent and he, he lied about the numbers and he fear-mongered because he wants to control us or some infantile fucking ridiculous claim. It's the same in the States, Trump. They're just whinging, endless whinging about Trump. Look, they're so corny. They even say all the same things. Trump has blood on his hands over coronavirus, says an economist. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, economists are the best people to talk to when you're discussing viruses. Fucking hell, everyone knows that. It's infantile. It doesn't matter what they do. Everything is politics. If he'd done well, they'd say something else. It's he's being authoritarian. He's, he's crushing people's freedoms. He's not letting them out. What a bastard. He's ruined. He's, he's a tyrant. And then if he does badly, they'll say, oh, he's blood on his hands. He's a murderer. He should have done more. There's no way to win this game. It, it's like the racial politics the communists are using, right? 
if you like black things and you use black things and you listen to black music, well, then you're a racist because you're uh, culturally appropriating them all. And if you hate all those things, well, uh, you're a racist because you don't like rap music and jerk chicken and fucking dreadlocks. So, you know, you lose either way. Trump and Boris Johnson lose either way. It's trivially easy to see where this game's gone, and it's childish. It's it's the political, it's a political hatchet job, and to make it so there is no way to win the game. Don't forget that Pelosi was calling him a racist when he did one thing that we know for a fact did help, and that's lock the borders with China way back in January when people were fucking freaking out and calling him a racist. Well, that definitely saved lives, didn't it? And Pelosi was in Chinatown in March going, go to your favourite restaurants, go on the subway, of course it won't do anything. Make your mind up. Make your mind up. Anyway, I think I'm done for the day. I will love to see where this goes by the end of the week. I, I, ru- I will love to see where we end up on the uh, on the league table <laughs> and then see what the lefties come up with to complain about it either way. Do too much authoritarian dictator fascist. Do too little Blood on your hands, mass murderer, you're basically a baby raper. <laughs> That's the way this argument's gone. Let's see what hijinks they can pull for the rest of the week. I'll still be here whinging about the lockdown as I have been for months, but I will probably change the subject because, frankly, we're all fucking sick of hearing about it, aren't we? Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.